action. Action. Oh, hello. Um, it's five o'clock somewhere with me, Farmer Bailey. I don't really talk like that. Um, cheers, friends. Good morning to my West Coast friends. Happy midday to those of you on the East Coast. And those of us over here on the other side of the Atlantic, um, well, it's happy hour. Today, Thomas has made um, a frozen bourbon cherry fantasy beverage. Uh, no name yet, but if it's good, we'll let you know. Uh, I'm feeling pretty bold drinking um, a red beverage with a white shirt, but here we go. Mm. They should grow cherries here on Madeira. There's a big cherry festival this weekend, so we've been all about the cherries lately. Um, today, we are going to talk about cool season annuals, but also there's some biennials and perennials that fit into this. Um, these are the flowers that you might know from Lisa Mason Ziegler's book, Cool Flowers. Um, if you don't have this, pick it up. It's really geared towards home gardeners, but there's a lot of great information about this group of flowers that we're going to talk about. Um, in short, these are things that some people can plant in the fall for harvesting the next year. The, you know, the advantage there is that they're going to bloom sooner than if you plant them in the spring. Um, mostly zones six, seven, eight that will do best with these flowers, but there are exceptions. And we're gonna go through, I don't know, a dozen, 15 different uh, flowers and talk about you know, some tricks uh, of each one. If you have questions, go on and send those to us. We've already got quite a long list of questions, which is great. Um, but we can take more. I like having questions. Okay, um, just a few announcements. If you haven't seen, we have uh, a contest going right now. Um, our Scoop Scabiosa Contest. Now we, we have been selling scoops for about six years now. We were the first people to bring them to the US market. Um, the range of varieties keeps getting better and we wanna really just feature them this summer. They're, they fit uh, they fit the production schedule really well because after tulips and you go into peonies and then right now you might be kind of missing something in your production schedule. So our scoops are the, the perfect little thing to, to fit in there. A lot of the hardy annuals we'll talk about today also um, sort of hit that exact moment in your season. Um, if you have some great scoop scabiosa photos, post them please and then tag Farmer Bailey Scoop contest. Uh, that'll be a hashtag, a Farmer Bailey Scoop Contest. The rules are on our website, farmerbailey.com. With contests, you have to be very legal about everything, so it's very transparent um, how this contest works. And if your photo is cho chosen as a favorite from one of our judges, um, you'll receive a free tray of Scoop Scabiosas, either this autumn or next spring, whatever works for you. You can pick the variety. We're not just going to send it to you. Um, you, have a, you have a say in this. So check out the Scoop Scabiosa contest. Um, we have a lot of nice entries already, but we can certainly use more. And this will go through the end of July because Northern growers are just starting to see theirs. So we want to uh, just give everyone time to, to show off what you got. Um, it could be a picture of the field. It could be a video of you in your field, or it could be a bouquet, or it can be whatever you want to do that just expresses how you feel about Scoop Scabiosas. I know how I feel about them, but I would like to hear from you. Um, so a lot of the products we will talk about today um, are, are shipped in the fall, mostly week 38 is traditionally when we start shipping things out, that's in September, but really 40, week 40 to 44 is the busiest time to receive these plugs. A lot of the items are, are available in the store now for those weeks. If you see them available, feel free to go on and order. If there's a zero or something's out of stock, don't worry about it. We're looking, we're just making sure we have seed before we offer it to you. So right now is the time of year where the, the seed suppliers let us know their projections, what we should have to produce these plugs. So you don't have to be in a hurry. Um, July 3rd is when we expect to have all of our seed information updated for these fall products. Um, poppies are one that we're getting a lot of questions about right now on uh, July 3rd, that's when those will be returned to the store once we get confirmation that we actually have the seed in all the colors. Um, one note on, on ordering, if you have items in your cart, 
that's great. You can put an item in your cart just kind of to remember what you want to order for a later date. But when you go in and submit it, it may not actually be there anymore. You know, the, the ship date will change, the, our inventory quantity changes. So don't think just because you have it in your cart that it is reserving it for you. Um, by all means, you could leave it in there just to remind yourself what it is you're ordering, but you'll need to empty your cart and refresh it with a new date, most likely. Um, it's just a little something that we've noticed. A few people submit the order and then they're disappointed when we let them know that, you know, that order should have been in four weeks ago to receive those products on your desired date. Okay, let's talk about tardy annuals slash biennial slash some perennials. The theory here is that, you know, we're seeing springs warm up so fast anymore. A lot of people, by the time they can get something in the ground, there's just not enough cool weather left for that crop to thrive. But if you plant them in September, October, November, as the days are getting shorter, the flower, the plant won't be triggered into flowering, but it will put out a big old root system. And that's the goal. You want to send out those roots, which will support next year's flowering. So every plant has a kind of a juvenile vegetative state where it's growing leaves and more importantly, roots. And then once it's triggered in flowering, it has all that network to support, all that strength to support the blooming of the flower. Um, this will allow you to harvest earlier in the season, generally with bigger flowers of better quality. Now there's certainly a day length component to a lot of these flowers. Campanula is the one we talk about most often in terms of day length. Under short days, the campanula that we grow for cutting um, will not flower. So a short day, less than 12 hours, really less than 10. Let's think about really short days of winter. The plant just won't want to flower. It's not receiving the signal from the sunlight that it's time to flower. It's just gonna keep growing roots, keep growing leaves, getting bigger and healthier for eventual blooming when the days get long. So usually I recommend planting, planting campanula on, in week 10 because that's when most of us in America still have shorter days. Um, it still has plenty, you give your plant plenty of time to establish and then bloom the next year. If you're in a mild enough climate, um, Campanula, I would say zone five or warmer. By all means, plant in week 40 or so. Um, that will give that plant all winter to get established. It's gonna be so fat and happy. You're gonna get giant stems next year. So there's a couple reasons we plant. Um, in the fall, one is to avoid the heat. The other is just because the day, the natural day length triggers the plant uh, either to stay dormant or to stay vegetative. And then later it triggers it to flower after it's had a chance to establish. Um, day length is really important. Uh, I won't talk about it all day today, but uh, really pay attention. So today's the solstice, I believe. Um, this is our longest day of the year. <clears throat> Compare the, your day length today with what you have in six months, you know, in the middle of winter. It's quite dramatic for most of us. Um, and, and plants really do watch. They count those hours. It's really remarkable how you, know, you can have a thousand plants out in the field and they all know exactly on the right day to initiate flowering together. It's really, uh, it amazes me every time that it works and that it works so well. Okay, we're gonna plow through a whole bunch of crops that can be planted in the fall. I'm gonna give you some hardiness information. Um, hold on one more second. Not just for the drink. <clears throat> one of my, <clears throat> one of my soapbox issues is the, the concept of zones. What do USDA winter hardiness zones mean and what do they not mean? I've already given it away. It's all about winter hardiness. It tells me nothing about your summer, nothing about your rainfall, nothing about your last frost date, your first frost date. Your zone only should be used to discuss hardiness. We're discussing hardiness today, so we'll talk about zones, so it's a very useful tool. <clears throat> the USDA, in theory, every 10 years updates the hardiness map based on what the observed coldest temperature seen in each location is. So it's not your average winter temperature, it's that one day that gets really cold and how cold did that get where you live? 
The other part of that equation is taking every plant and testing it to how cold it can drop down to. So the zone is just to help you match your plant, the, zone, the notion of zones to help match your location with your plant. <clears throat> now we've all seen weather patterns, the climate, all over the place, more and more every year. So what you think is your zone may not be your zone. I want you to all start keeping your own weather records so you know what your actual observed lows are because you might be able to grow things that you don't think you can grow. Um, the other end of that is how can you prepare for, you know, a plunge down to 20 below when you are used to living in a zone eight climate where you, you know, don't go below 10 usually. Um, so we'll talk about that after. Right now we're just going to go through all the different kinds of things that can be planted um, in the autumn for spring flower. Also, these are the first things that you're going to put out. If you live in a, in a northern climate where you can't um, give these plants what they need, these are the first things that will go out in the springtime. As I said, feel free to send questions. We're going to go through a lot of questions after we go through the flowers. So Amy, um, I'm going to go kind of alphabetically here. Amy is a type of carrot, Queen Anne's Lace, you might see it. It's more, a more cultivated uh, Queen Anne's Lace. There's a couple different uh, variations of Amy. <clears throat> Hardy down to about zero degrees. Um, if you sit below zero for much of the winter, um, you might want to wait until spring to plant this. It does very well in cooler northern climates when planted in the spring. Um, aren't too many tricks here. Just get it in the ground right when it arrives. It is a carrot, it's a carrot relative, so think about that tap root of the carrot. It's gonna get kind of, it's more prone to getting uh, root bound than some other crops are. Um, okay, Bells of Ireland, almost the same, I'm gonna say the same thing. Um, zone seven and warmer, you can plant them out in the fall. Now, obviously if you're growing in a tunnel in the north, you can plant them in the fall as well, but just think about your actual observed low temperatures so they want to say zero or above. You know, they're going to be above freezing most of the time, but they can tolerate dips down to zero for short periods of time. <clears throat> One's a little bit hardier would be uh, Rudbeckia. I'm talking about the Rudbeckia herta types, um, like Sahara, like um, Irish eyes, you know, the classic black-eyed Susans. Um, hardy to at least zone five, I definitely had them overwinter sometime in our zone three Vermont, uh, on our farm in Vermont, but we had a lot of snow cover. So snow cover can change all of these numbers dramatically for you. If you have a big, deep, reliable snow cover, you can get away with planting stuff that's even a couple zones warmer. Um, I don't know who's gonna have a reliable snow cover anymore, maybe the upper peninsula of Michigan, somewhere with lake effect snow, maybe you're seeing more snow now. Um, but if you've got a big, deep snow cover, utilize that, plant some things out in the fall, um, and uh, hopefully it'll still be there and ready to go for you in the springtime. <clears throat> um, Bupleurum, also quite hardy, zone five. Um, if you, you know, aren't dropping below negative 20 for much of your winter, you can probably plant Bupleurum in the fall. Um, you know, for all of these zones, seven, eight, six, seven, eight are more reliable. But if you're on the edge, give it a try. I'm a, a bit of a risk taker myself. So we talked about Campanula. Um, generally hardy to around zone five. These are some that I planted out too late. I should have planted them, like I say, before week 10. So we're in Madeira Island, Portugal. We're in the same latitude as Atlanta, Georgia, as San Diego. But uh, so we're getting the same same kind of light that you get in those parts. So a little bit you know, south by American standards. But even being planted in maybe week 13, week 14, I still have 24 inches of, of length here. Um, it would have been bigger if I had planted earlier. Um, Campanula is one of my favorites. We were just in Holland last week uh, visiting with Cicada. They produced the Champion series of Campanula. It's really the only one I recommend for cut flower growing. Um, Campanula medium is the species. In the wild, it's a true biennial, meaning it needs to uh, grow for a year and then go through a dormant period and then flower. Well, what's cool about Champion, it's been bred into an annual. So it flowers the first year. Um, unfortunately, it will flower in the plug tray if you get it in the middle of summer. As soon as you have those long days, more than 12 hours, 
it wants to flower. So you really need to order this um, for fall, winter, or spring planting. Um, those of you in zones eight, nine, you could be planting that in December, January. Northern tier people, get that out in mid, mid to late October would be great for you. Uh, another great one for the northern growers is delphinium. In the north, you, we could always plant delphinium in the spring. You can plant it any time because it's a true hardy perennial. What kills delphinium is not cold, it's the summer heat and the mildew in more humid climates. Um, if you think you can't grow delphinium because you think of it as a cold northern flower, uh, I suggest you try planting it in the fall. You know, it's not going to live more than one season, but even treat it as an annual, you will get a really nice harvest the spring after fall planting. Um, you know, fully hardy down to negative 20, negative 30, even colder. But uh, if you're in a warmer zone, plant that out in say week 40, that's going to be really nice for you the next year. Um, they don't seem to have much day length response, so even if you have a high tunnel, plant some in the high tunnel and some outside in the field, you get a, just kind of a natural staggering of your bloom time. <clears throat> Alright, Daucus, uh, it's another fancy carrot, just like Ami, um, roughly zone 7, uh, likes it cool, plant it right away because of that taproot. Right, Feverfusa, you know, Matricaria we call it. Um, you know, cute little daisy flowers, some are more pom-pom shaped. A um, little objectionable fragrance to some people, but I think they're really, really sweet and lovely for kind of early season filler flower. Um, probably hardy to around zone five. Um, get that in the ground in October or so, it'll probably live well for you. Also no harm in planting that in the spring for most people. It's not as cold uh, sensitive, or not as heat sensitive as some of these crops. All right, everyone's favorite, digitalis or foxglove. <clears throat> I talked about campanula and how the wild forms of campanula are true biennials. The wild forms of digitalis are truly biennials planted in the fall for spring flowering. We have a number of digitalis on our website. I think they are just listed as other digitalis. These are the true biennial types, so they need to be planted in the fall. Um, or even late summer is fine. They're not going to flower because they have to go through a cold period before they're able to initiate bud. That's what we call vernalization. So think about vernalization. Ver vernal equinox is the spring equinox. Vernalization is kind of the preparation for springs, so that cold period that allows the flower to receive the response to bloom. Then we have the um, Dalmatian and Camelot series now. They have been bred into annuals just like the champion Campanula has been bred to behave like an annual. But if you plant it out in the fall, it's not going to flower because the days are getting short. It can read that information. So there again, plant around week 40. It's going to sit there all winter and bloom the next spring. Now, we always had Digitalis live beautifully in Zone 3, Vermont. Here again, we had a lot of snow. Um, seeing some people in zones three and four having more trouble now that snowfall is less uh, consistent than it was. They don't like to sit in water. You know, when they're growing, they like quite a bit of water, but they don't want to be just sodden all winter long. And they also really don't like repeated, you know, freezing and thawing cycles. But if you have those repeated and freezing, those repeated uh, freeze fall cycles, what do you do? Well, you can put some row cover over them, you can pile leaves over them, um, straw, just be ready to, you know, be ready to move when you see that bad weather coming in. Um, there's just no way to predict what we're going to see anymore, but the plant is always going to respond the same. So if it's, you know, 60 degrees one day, it's going to start growing, and then you get negative 20, um, that new tender growth is going to die. And uh, it's up to you to figure out how you're going to compensate. Um, I'm afraid I don't have any more secrets to battling uh, climate change other than we just have to be, you know, we have to, we have to think quick. Um, so Dalmatian is probably my favorite series. Camelot acts a lot like it. Um, also planted in the springtime in the cooler weather, you're not going to have any trouble getting flowers on that. I think if you plant digitalis in the heat of summer, it might just kind of sit there. 
Um, so I recommend planting it, at least in the cooler part of the year for blooming a little bit later. <clears throat> Godisha is another fun one with a very strong day length response, um, kind of like Campanula. If you plant Godisha in a place that doesn't get a lot of freezing, so it's probably only hardy to maybe dip down to about 10 degrees. It wants to be cool, but above freezing for the most part. You can take a little bit of frost. Um, but if you plant that in the fall, come springtime, you're gonna have like 10, 10 foot Godisha, maybe not that big. It gets really tall. Uh, but there again, if you plant it in the middle of summer, those long days are gonna trigger it into flower right away. And you're gonna get, you know, little eight inch flowers. So plant Godisha in the, in the darker days of the year or in the fall for spring bloom. Um, not all of us have the climate that can accommodate that. Maybe they have to go in the tunnel for you. Um, Godisha likes poor soil, so don't fertilize the soil where Godisha is going or it will get really big and really kind of floppy. Um, maybe you've made a new bed, haven't had time to amend it, <clears throat> put your Godisha there. Um, it will do quite well for you. Um, some people grow ornamental kale and plant it in the fall. Um, in Vermont, we always planted it in May for fall harvest because when you start getting those cool days um, of autumn, that's when they really color up. But plant it in the fall, you can use it, you know, you can be harvesting on it all winter. As long as you're not dropping super cold, it's going to just sort of stay there and be ready for you to cut whenever you want it. Um, that's, that's one I might plant, uh, I don't know, week 38 or even a little bit earlier to get some height on it before the cool weather comes. The cool weather brings out the color in your ornamental kale or a cabbage on a stick, as I like to call it. All right, the Larkspur, another really popular um, cool season annual. Fairly hardy, probably down to zone six, meaning you know dips down to negative 10 aren't gonna hurt it. Um, another one with a big tap root that you don't wanna hold it in the tray, get them into the ground on arrival. Um, similarly, similarly to Nigella, they actually look kind of alike in the young stage, very ferny foliage, um, also hardy zone six. Uh, negative 10 degrees, get them right in the ground. They have a taproot. A lot of these do seem to have taproots, don't they? <clears throat> Pansies, uh, we do have sometimes some uh, violas bred in Italy. The bad part about the series is that the colors are all over the place. We don't really know what's in each of these mixes. Um, we always try to find out and we don't get a lot of great information. So if you're feeling a little, uh, a little wild, wanna fly by the seat of your pants. Try some of these Italian pansies. Plant them really close. The closer you plant them, the taller they're gonna stretch. Then you're cutting like the whole chunks of the plant at the same time. Um, they, they seem kind of floppy, they seem kind of weak, but they actually last a really long time. And that could be that, just that one little touch that your designer is looking for to really complete, uh, complete a design. All right. Um, Scabiosa, generally hardy to zero degrees, dips down to zero, that's zone seven. Um, I'm talking about Scabiosa atropurpurea, like the QIS, like the, was it Dark Maiden or is it Snow Maiden, Dark Knight, uh, Fata Morgana. <clears throat> These are the annual types. They, you know, they've got a good bit of cold hardiness in them. Um, on the other side, Scoop Scabiosas are a special hybrid. They're not as hardy. They can take a little bit of frost but they're too expensive. I would not recommend putting them in the field and crossing your fingers. Um, you want to put those in a more sheltered place. They do like it cool. They're happy dropping down to 30 degrees, but don't challenge them by um, putting them out in a place where they're going to go below zero. Um, they might make it, but I'm not going to promise. The best, the people who are overwintering them well are growing in tunnels or they're growing in places like California um, that aren't receiving brutal repeated freezes. All right, um, went out of order a little bit. So poppies, the good old Icelandic poppy. We're more familiar with the Italian version of the Icelandic poppies. These would be the hummingbird types, the colibri types. These are the big, you know, the big multi-petaled, kind of crazy ones. I think they're tetraploid, which means they have twice as many chromosomes uh, as other Icelandic poppies. I think, this is just my hunch, because they get so big and you, they're kind of weird and contorted sometimes which you often see when things are tetraploid. Um, hardy to probably zone six, 
Um, zone 7 would be safer unless you're going in a tunnel, in which case, even up in Vermont, planting them in the middle of winter in a tunnel was fine. Um, they aren't available until week 44, that's the earliest. They don't mind the cold, they really don't like heat, so it's hard for grow and sell to produce them any earlier than week 44, just because of the, the lingering heat of late summer um, overheats their greenhouses and they can't get them ready for you in time. All right, um, snapdragons, one of the classic hardy annuals, ones you plant out um, in the really cold part of the year. They want to, they really prefer growing colder than warmer. <clears throat> um, some people say hardy to zone four. I would be cautious about that. I mean, in, under a lot of snow, absolutely. But, uh, you know, it, they, they might make it. We have them live in zone three on the, on the edge bed of our high tunnel in Vermont where it gets really quite cold. Um, so play around with it a little bit. Snapdragons um, are best planted quite close together. Most of our plugs are gonna have two or three seedlings in them. So in each you know, six inch square, I always use the Hordanova support netting as my guide for spacing when I'm planting things, or planting everything really. Um, if you have two or three plug plants in one plug, put them right together. You know, two or three plants per six inch square. It's not too close for snapdragons. It's gonna make them grow nice and tall and straight. If you plant them in the cold cold part of the year, you know, we would usually plant maybe in, in Vermont, maybe in week eight as the light, you're starting to get some light in springtime, and we would still get, you know, four foot, five foot tall snapdragons. Um, stock can go in at the same time. Almost everything is the same for the culture of stock. I think snapdragons might be a slight, might be slightly, uh, more cold hardy than, uh, than stock, but stock should be fine. At least zone six, maybe zone five. Um, again, two or three plants per six inch square. They should, we multi-seed our stock, so you should be seeing um, two or three plants um, in each plug on arrival. Don't separate them. Um, stock especially does not want to have its roots disturbed. Another note about stock. <clears throat> stock is probably 55, 60% double. The breeders, uh, they would love to see it 100% double because the doubles are, well, they're bigger. They sell better. It's what the commercial growers want. Now there are ways to go through and select them at the seedling stage and pull out the ones that might be single. Um, that's a lot of work. I think they've, some places are using robots to do that. We don't have robots that do that yet. And by the time they reach you, it's too late to do that. So plant them all. You can always use those single flowers in a bouquet. Um, when we grew them in Vermont, we would separate out the doubles and the singles. They looked like a different flower altogether. Um, people were like, oh, what's that? I've never seen it. They still smell great. They last just as long. But that's just a, a funky little trait about stock. Now there are yellows and whites that have, these are the high double strains. They will produce mostly doubles. For some reason, the genetics don't allow for the purples and the apricots and the other colors to, uh, you know, to be a high double strain. I don't understand the correlation between the different colors and the different uh, appearance, but that's just the way it is. So I know the breeders are working on this. Hopefully someday we'll see full, full double strains in all colors. We aren't there yet. Um, and that's okay, I can be patient. <clears throat> Okay, strawflower, another one that you might not think of as a cool annual, really only for warmer winter places, zone eight and warmer, um, maybe a little cooler if you're growing in a high tunnel, but there again, they're gonna you know, just be giant massive plants by springtime if you have these kind of conditions. The downside is on a you know, 50 degree day, they're gonna start putting out beautiful lush growth and then you get that you know, 10, 20 degree night. Um, it's really gonna, really gonna hurt them a lot. So. Uh, be willing, be ready to protect them if you're gonna plant them early. I got a lot of photos late winter, early spring from Southern growers asking what was going on and it's pure and simple frost damage, not that, that hardy. <clears throat> um, okay, Dianthus was going alphabetically, but for some reason Dianthus is not uh, in the right place. Dianthus could be Sweet William or other types of Dianthus, such as Sweet, such as Amazon. Really quite hardy, um, even in the field in Vermont, they were fine all over winter under a lot of snow. 
The sweet william types want to grow, they are true biennials. They need to go out in the autumn for flowering the following year. Um, planting them a little bit earlier, you know, a month before your last frost, I'm sorry, a month before your first frost, would be great just to get a, a nice, you know, a nice crown growing before the cold weather comes. And then they just kind of hunker down and sit there, but they're still growing roots. Come springtime, you're going to see those nice ball-shaped flowers. A lot of them have you know, nice picotees and eyes on them. Um, I really do love Sweet William, and it's a, an old-fashioned flower that has nostalgia for some people. So, uh, you know, Electron is the classic series. There's not much out there that's better than that. Um, Hollandia is another series you will see sometimes very, very similar. <clears throat> Things like Amazon and Sweet, uh, they do have some uh, Dianthus barbatus, that's the um, that's Sweet William. They have some of that in their genetics, but they're crossed with other, other species of Dianthus. We don't really know what the other species are, but they behave more like annuals. They're going to flower with the long days of summer. Amazon has no trouble achieving height. Even if planted in the middle of summer, it will get tall. <clears throat> in my experience, sweet needs to be planted very early in the year. So in those darker days, probably before week 10, in the cooler part of the year, um, to get any length. When I would plant them out in Vermont, it was probably week 16, 17 before we were able to get into the field. Um, my sweet would usually bloom at, you know, eight or 10 inches of height. People in the mid-Atlantic, people are planting, you know, a month, six weeks earlier, they would be seeing these, you know, 24 or 30 inch stems on the sweet series. Um, so be curious to you know your, your experience. Feel free to email us if you have the key to growing good sweet dianthus. Um, Amazon is great. The problem is it only comes in two colors and they're really quite bright for a lot of palettes. I think if we had something that behaved like uh, Amazon dianthus in all the colors, it would be one of our top products and we would all be growing just bushels of it. <clears throat> okay, trachelium. Um, I've just recently learned it's part, uh, it's in the Campanula family. You wouldn't think so by looking at it. Um, it has a bit of a day length response as well. It wants to be started under, you know, the darker days of uh, late winter, early spring, and then blooms in summertime. Um, hardy to about zero, zone seven. Um, I haven't been able to test that myself. Again, I'd be curious to know uh, what you are seeing. I generally planted it in a tunnel in, in about week 12 in Vermont. It's a cool soil, but not getting frozen, and it, it bloomed beautifully. Um, almost black, purple, lavender shades, and also some whites and greens. <clears throat> okay, Orlea, another fancy carrot. Maybe a little bit colder, uh, more hardy than Emmy and Dawkus, just by a bit. Um, what I like about Olay is the petals are wider, so you get more of a visual impact from it. Um, that's a zone six rating. And yarrow is really a true perennial. Um, no problem to keep yarrow going in zones three and four, but you can plant it out in the fall. Probably I would choose week 38, maybe a little bit earlier to give it time to establish. It's not going to be in a rush to flower. It waits until, you know, that tuft of foliage is big enough to get blooming. Uh, I made a little note here about didiscus. <clears throat> We've been listing didiscus when we can get seed. It's kind of hard to get seed sometimes. Um, I think it wants to be above freezing, but cool. And not many of us have this sort of magical 32 to 55 extended period of good light. Um, I think the key to didiscus is probably just extended cool, but not freezing temperatures. I wouldn't be surprised if it can take a bit of frost. If some of you, if any of you have figured out like the key to growing didiscus, let me know. We sell the plugs because you've asked us to, and I feel bad that I can't offer more uh, expert advice about it because I just don't know. But uh, hopefully you do. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna switch over to questions here. There's still time for more. I may have missed some crops. If you think I've missed one of your favorite cool season annuals, uh, biennials or perennials, let me know. Um, but the same, kind of the same conditions apply to all these. Let's think of them as, as a group. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right. 
Uh, Reed Farm Atlanta. I grew Campanula in the field, but the ones that the ones that made it are fire. Um, three flame emojis. But almost half died from what looked like fusarium yellowing from the bottom up and having non-existent non-existent root system when they finally collapsed. We've got a lot of rain this year. Do you deal with any fungal issues? And if so, do you have any tips? <clears throat> um, it does sound like a fungal issue. They don't want to stand in water. Nothing wants to stand in water. So my tip is to improve your drainage. And I know that's not what you want. Or to bring them in a tunnel so you can keep the rain off them. Um, really good drainage is key to almost all these crops. Nothing, yeah, almost nothing we've talked about today will thrive if the roots are sitting wet and cold all winter. That's, it might not be fusarium. Fusarium is a root rot pathogen, but there's alternaria, there's, um, I'm, I'm forgetting some others. There's a number of root rot organisms that rot the roots and then the top wilts because, well, they have no roots. So Campanula, do what you can to give it better drainage. It's really not problematic. It's not like Lysianthus that's fairly prone to Fusarium. Um, but I would try to keep the rain off it if you can, or move it into your best drained location. Um, it's funny, we've got several Campanula questions here. It seems to bloom around the same time for everyone because we're all getting longer days at the same time. They're all triggered into flowering. Um, I think maybe Southern, well, now I'm seeing photos that all of you are posting from north to south right now. Um, and even over here in subtropical Madeira, here they are. Okay, try fall planting your companion last fall. They're blooming beautifully now. Will they make another flush of blooms or should I pull them and replace them with something else after the first flush? Um, this is Foxtail Flower Farm. They say they're in a weird mountain climate with really cold winters, really hot, dry summers, and a short growing window. <clears throat> It kind of depends on what your market is. So my market was always this. I wanted a nice, long, straight stem. Um, I wanted my stuff to look like the stuff coming from the floral wholesaler. Now what happens if you, after you cut this flower, that rosette of leaves is still going to be on the ground. Um, you're going to see, you know, smaller, smaller side shoots that might reach a foot, maybe a little bigger if, if they're really happy. If you have a market for you know those kind of smaller side shoots, by all means, keep them going. They're gonna put out some more flowers. They're not gonna be like this. They're only gonna put out one uh, you know, super nice stem and then, then you're gonna get some side shoots. Um, you know, if you do small, we used to do small mason jar arrangements for farmer's markets. They were great for that. Um, you know, I'd already sold the main stem. I'd made my money on that plug. And then I, all this other stuff was just kind of extra. And so, I, you know, Really depends on your market. If you have a market for short stems, by all means, leave them there. You could try, you know, when they first start emerging in the spring, pinch out that middle flower, pinch out the flower that's gonna turn into this. Um, it's gonna hurt your feelings, but if you do that, those five or six side shoots are going to get much taller and they'll probably reach almost this height and be very usable. You know, feel free to experiment. You can do that with, with Digitalis too. If you pinch out the big, thick main stem, you're gonna get, um, lots of usable side stems, but it's gonna feel pretty scary when you do it. I just thought of some other very important cool season annual, and then it left my brain again. So if you know what it is, let me know. All right, um, Six Duchess Farm for Northeast Growers, zone 7A, did you say week 10 is the ideal planting week for Campanula? So zone 7A, you could probably plant out in the fall, even in the field, and they're gonna be just fine for you. If you want to plant them in the spring, plant them before week 10. The key is to get wherever you are, they need to be in before week 10. That could be week 50, that could be week 40. They just wanna, they need to go in during the short days of the year. So ideally below 10 hours, maybe below 11 hours. Um, the shorter the day, the better for Campanula. So it can grow those roots, grow the leaves, and then be ready to burst into action when spring comes along. Um, more Campanula, very popular right now. That's great. I love Campanula. I'm glad it's getting uh, the attention it deserves. Very long lasting um, while I'm thinking about it. The best time to cut Campanula is when this, you know, when all the buds are closed and just that first flower is starting to open. 
Um, they open very well in a holding solution. And then you don't risk, uh, well, I don't know, you see there's, we've got one flower here that's you know pretty brown. They can take on water. We had a lot of rain here 10 days ago and these got kind of beaten. But pick them just as those first buds are starting. Get them that holding solution. They're gonna last um, a week, 10 days in the cooler and then another week or 10 days out of the cooler. Really one of my favorites. Um, all right, Cardinal Harms, Michigan. What number of daylight hours, or so what day length does Champion Campanula need to bloom? Um, it's gonna start blooming over 12 hours. So that's gonna be, uh, you know, vernal equinox for, well, I guess all of us. That's when the days switch from short to long. Um, or Campanula. Got Ralph in Zone B, New York. Am I better off planting Campanula and Delphinium in early spring or in the fall? It's gonna depend for you, Ralph, on your actual conditions. Campanula, right on the edge, would probably make it for you in the, even out in the field. If you have a high tunnel, by all means, plant Campanula in the fall in Zone B. It's gonna be fine. You can keep the worst of the cold off it. Um, Delphinium, you can plant in or out. It's going to and you can plant fall or spring in a, in a zone five, um, zone five New York. You know, assuming your summers are not extra sweltering, if you don't have like a Georgia summer, they're probably gonna live for you just fine. Um, I always planted in the spring just because I didn't have that much space in my tunnel. Most of my delphinium was outside. Um, but every now and then, if I had a little, a little bed in the tunnel, I'd stick some delphinium there because it's just gonna bloom, you know, three or four weeks earlier in the tunnel. <laughs> uh, Glam Blue Eyes says, you know, I'm surprised that my Campanula is still alive here in Phoenix. Not happy, but alive, and that says a lot. Um, yeah, the flower itself doesn't seem to mind the heat. It's just the roots want to establish in those cool, dark months. Um, I love Campanula. Grow more Campanula. <laughs> All right, uh, Sand Dragons. Okay, Armstrong, Acres, Massachusetts. I cannot keep snaps through the winter. Uh, in zone 6A, everyone says they should be hardy. I don't believe it unless it involves a hoop or a greenhouse. Um, that maybe doesn't surprise me if you're seeing lots of repeated freezing and thawing, which most places are seeing nowadays. Um, so that's your, that, that's your situation. Plant early spring as soon as the soil can be worked. They don't mind, you know, dips down to 20 degrees. Um, no reason not to plant them while you are still receiving frosts and they will still bloom just fine for you. Um, the best snaps are grown in hoop houses. They just get massive if you can plant them in the really cold part of the winter, but in the protection of a hoop house. All right. Well, this is, relates directly to that. Um, we got from Armstrong Acres. My snaps come back. We get down to 20 below zero. However, we do have a consistent blanket of two to four feet of snow from the end of October through March. That sounds like where we were in Vermont. So maybe the snow helps insulate them. The snow absolutely helps insulate them. In places that get that kind of snow, the ground honestly never freezes. So right at the plant level, it's, you know, 32, 33 degrees. No problem for the plant. Um, snow is really amazing, although I don't like taking it off a high tunnel. Um, further comment there, this person is in zone five, sometimes zone four, maybe try insulating with straw or leaf mulch if you don't have snow. I think that's a great, uh, a great bit of advice. Uh, Sagawi 21635 says, do you pinch snapdragons that are planted three plants per six inches? Um, no, if you, if you pinch them, they're going to branch and then you're just going to have way too much volume and growing in the same little area. Um, planting them close together makes them grow straight. You're giving them a lot of competition. Their only way to grow is upwards. You're going to get nice long stems. They're not going to have a lot of branchy side growth. Um, so for what I used to prefer to send to my florist was a tall straight stem similar to what you see at the wholesaler. If you do want to pinch them, I would space them at least six inches apart. Something like Rocket. The Rocket series tends to uh, be a little less uniform, but if you space them out and pinch them, 
they are going to branch just fine for you. Um, series like Potomac, like Maryland, um, like the cool series. These are the, the tall, straight, um, the greenhouse forcing snapdragons they're sometimes called. These are the ones you want to plant together. Don't pinch, let them grow up. Enjoy that one cut of flowers. And uh, yeah, you'll, you'll plant them when it's cold and you will have great success. Um, Cardinal Farms in Michigan, what series of Digitalis did you say is now bred as an annual? The primary one that we sell is um, Dalmatian. There's also one called Camelot. We list both of them. They both behave quite similarly. I don't, I truly don't know the difference between the two, but they are both first year flowering, especially if planted in the, in the springtime. You can also plant them in the fall so they establish during those cooler days of the year. Okay, um, Golden Season Flower Company, what week would you plant? Larkspur in Zone 9. Uh, zone 9, you're only maybe dropping down to 20 degrees. Um, I would plant them when your soil starts to cool off in the fall. Depending on where you are, that could be, um, that could be week 40 or that could be 50 or later. You know, Zone 9, California, if you're in like a coastal cool climate, um, you know, planting them in late November would be, would be great. You're going to have your shortest days of the year. You give them a couple months of really short day conditions and then they'll bloom really nicely for you. Um, Kelly Flower Farm says, do you pinch straw flowers? I would pinch straw flowers, especially if you're growing them, uh, if you're planting in the fall. So it's going to get so big. That first stem is you know, going to be an inch across. If you pinch out that first flower, you'll get a nice flush of side shoots. <clears throat> so Lysianthus is something I wanted to talk about. Um, Lisa Mason Ziegler in her books lists Lysianthus as a cool flower. I would really reserve that for people in drier, more arid places, you know, the Arizonas, the Southern Californias, um, maybe Texas, places that get really hot really fast in the spring and don't get much cold in the winter. I don't see a reason to push it any further than that. You're not, they're not going to bloom much earlier for you. You're going to have to worry about rain getting on them or them sitting in water and having fusarium and root rot. So generally I'm going to say, don't think of Lysianthus as a cool season annual. Um, in reality, for people in the, in the warmest winter places, you can plant them and it's probably recommended that you plant them in week 45 to 50 to give them the coolest time of the year to establish the roots. Um, so my garden bloom said, uh, well, this is a question about planting in the middle of summer. Are they going to bloom in November? Um, I guess they got plugs delivered in June. Um, will they bloom in November? The question is, well, when you plant Lysianthus in the middle of summer, it will sometimes rosette. It, they want us, they really prefer to establish in the cool part of the year to get the root system established and then flower as the daylight gets longer and the heat increases. So if by chance you're in a cool summer place, you can plant them out any time of year. And as long as you keep the frost on them, they will go on and flower. All right, we well, still got more questions. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, we're going long, but uh, I've got nowhere to be, pardon me. Okay, Open Sky Organic Farm. We're in zone 4B on the fence about minimally heating one of our hoops. Is it possible to overwinter some of these without supplemental heat? I think a lot about my friends Dave and Hillary at Maury Hill Farm in Crassbury, Vermont. They are way up there. They're a zone. They're near near where we used to live. Um, most winters will probably be classified as Zone Three. They're growing almost all of these, certainly snapdragons and stock and poppies and campanula and delphinium and digitalis as fall planted annuals, they're not heating. The thing you're gonna have to do probably is, you know, make little hoops inside your, low, low tunnels inside your high tunnel and do the whole cover uncover every time you're gonna have a cold night. Um, it can be a lot of work, but also it can be the key to having um, a lot of flowers in the spring. You know, if you have a high tunnel, think about those. The edge beds are going to get a lot colder than the beds in the middle. I was always surprised, even in our unheated tunnels, um, that I could still work that soil even in those darkest, coldest days. 
of winter, it might be negative 30 outside. The soil still hadn't frozen in the middle beds. So uh, I'd say zone 4B, you can, you can probably do it. You know, maybe stay away from Godisha and straw flowers, the ones that are a little more tender, but by all means, most of these should work for you. Um, good fight flowers. I might need your help answering this one, everyone. What are the hardiest snapdragon varieties? Um, they are in zone 6B and grow in the field over winter. I don't have information um, by hardiness. I don't have variety specific hardiness information for snapdragons. I don't know that anyone has done this formally. Um, it's gonna be all about the same. They're, uh, they're all generally pretty cold hardy. They're all bred from the same species, the same you know historic stock that's been around for almost centuries now. So I think they're probably gonna be fairly similar. Okay. Laughing door, how old? I guess how old should your seedlings be when you plant them outside? Does it depend on variety and zone? Um, specifically snapdragon stock, scabiosa. It's tricky to get the timing right. Um, when to sow to have them ready to plant. So, the plugs that we sell arrive ready to plant. Um, that's one of the great things about plugs. Now, if you look, for m most of these varieties are very commercial, like most Snapdragon stock, even maybe Scabioso, you can find a culture sheet and it will give you guidelines of how far ahead of transplant to start your plug so it's ready to go. Um, yes, we sell plugs. I also want everyone to get really good at growing seeds because you can't afford to buy everything from a plug and we all need to be better at growing and propagating our own plants. In terms of transplant time, generally about a month before your first cross is when you want to get them in the ground. Um, there's some wiggle room there. You know, in Vermont, we always got one frost and then we would have another five weeks without a frost. So they're gonna keep establishing anytime it's above freezing, you know, 40 degrees or above, they're gonna keep growing those roots. So you have some wiggle room there, but generally about, about one month before your first frost is when you ideally will get these things in the ground. If you're going in a tunnel, that can be later. Um, but also, if you miss that window, don't worry about it. Just get them in the ground, and most of the time, they're going to be okay. Um, split trading company, does overwintering work for zone B? It does, if you pick the right plants, absolutely. Mm, okay, Paula asked, what are week numbers? Is week one January 1st? Um, generally, week one is the first full week of January. Now, if you have an iPhone and you go in there, you can turn on week numbers. The problem is sometimes the iPhone will just take, <clears throat> will start week one with whatever week January 1st is. Um, the worldwide horticultural industry observes kind of the first full week or the first, you know, depending on the calendar, you may only have six days, but that's still enough of a week to start it at week one. We always have this information listed on our, listed on our website. Um, the week numbers we use are the same ones that the industry is using. So our week, you know, that should be, our, our week 10 is the same as someone else's week 10. We were just in, uh, in Holland for a big flower trial looking at new varieties and that always happens in week 24. That's just guaranteed it's week 24. Um, but yes, the week numbers start with the first full week of January and then they progress from there. Week two is the second week, week three is the third week. Um, we are in week 25 now, I believe. So we're kind of halfway through the year already. All right, um, Megan asked, Megan from zone A asks, if you're planting out October-ish for fall, do you recommend just direct seeding or can you start in your greenhouse and transplant out in the fall for earlier spring blooms? When I'm talking about planting in you know, weeks 38 to 40, I'm talking about transplanting a plug. Um, I'm not the biggest expert in direct seeding. Um, if you're going to direct seed, do it probably um, three or four weeks earlier than I'm indicating for plugs because you need more time for that plant to establish. Um, okay. Uh, 
this means I've got calendula and bachelor buttons. I don't have a lot of experience. Like I said, I've been mostly working in the, the plug realm for the last few years. Uh, Lisa's book does talk about both of these things. Um, I would check out her book. I'm sure she has some good information. Both are pretty easily direct seeded. Um, you know, when I grew bachelor buttons in my garden, I would just sprinkle them on the snow and then as they melted, they would be kind of good, good timing for, uh, for blooming. Okay, if you miss your planting window on Campanula, this is Busher, Bushel and a Pet Flower Farm. If you miss your planting window on Campanula, could you overwinter it or is it compost material? Um, so I'm guessing they plant that out in the summertime. It, depending on when you get it in the ground, it might, if it hasn't bloomed, it'll probably keep growing and then flower the following year. I'm guessing with the long days of summer, you're gonna see flowers that are quite short, in which case I would go in and compost that and try again next year. <clears throat> uh, Mossy Gate Flower Farm, so curious how Zone 8 farms have been handling the hard sudden freezes that have been hitting later and later uh, in the Pacific Northwest winters. I mean, certainly Southern growers are seeing the same thing. Um, they've been avoiding fall planting because the field is 20 minutes from home and worrying about winds and temperatures in the teens make me nervous. Yeah, there's no worse night of sleep than that night when you get that cold snap and you're worried about your plants. Um, really, the only solution I see <clears throat> is to growing in tunnels, very sturdy tunnels that can stand up to that wheat, that wind, and uh, give you, you know, a little buffer on your temperature. And then, then plant earlier in the season. Um, because if you still are planting at the same time, it's going to get too hot in that tunnel early. So as things get warm, but then we have these really crazy dips. I think you're going to see more people moving into tunnels for this type of production. Um, I don't see another way around it. The plant's needs are the plant's needs. The plant can't change what it, the conditions under which it will thrive. So, uh, you know, think, just think about, think about what the plant needs and just kind of matter of factly think, can I give these conditions to this plant or not? Um, and that, that's, that, them, them's the breaks that we see. No. <laughs> All right, we're getting near the end here. Thanks for sticking with me. It's been almost an hour, but there's a lot to talk about with this issue. Um, Plant to scoop scabios in a high tunnel in 7B. How long should I expect them to bloom? Um, this is cottage blooms in Virginia. They're gonna bloom until the heat shuts them down. If you live in a cool place, they'll bloom for a year. I mean, they grow them on the, on the equator in the high mountains of Ecuador and Colombia. And these same plants will bloom for a couple of years on end. Um, they don't like heat. So if you start getting days in the 90s, they're gonna, your stems are gonna get shorter and then they're gonna fizzle out. What I would do in that situation is kind of shear them back to maybe 10 inches. Um, they'll sort of sulk all summer, but then as things get cooler in the fall, you'll see another flush and you will have some flowers to harvest in the late season. Um, Mimosa Hill Farm, my snap bags got rust for the first time. What do you recommend for the bed they were in? What action should I take prior to using this bed for another crop? Um, rust is airborne. It's everywhere in most climates. You know, not everywhere, but it's very common. So the thing with all, all fungal pathogens is reducing moisture on the leaves. Certainly if the, you don't want moisture standing on the soil and then increasing airflow. So in a still wet, damp period, that's when you're going to see a lot of fungal issues take hold. Um, you might need a fungicide. Uh, I'm not a plant pathologist, so I can't tell you for sure the best thing to do, but perhaps there are some products you could, uh, you could apply preemptively if you think it's, this is your first time doing this. The rust, the rust fungi have been in your environment this entire time, um, but the conditions have lined up against you this time. So, um, you know, reduce, reduce your humidity and your moisture and increase your airflow. That's the best advice I can give for fungal issues. Um, Blossom Pine Flowers, you recommend a March or April planting of Lysianthus for uh, Zone 5B. Again, Zone 5B doesn't tell me anything about when your last 
when your prostates are, what your spring conditions are. That's only what your winter lows are. In general, you want to plant Lysianthus if you're planting in the field three to four weeks before your last frost. And you can move that up to five or six or seven weeks if you're planting them in a tunnel. So they want to go into cool soil. They don't mind brief dips down to 20 degrees. Um, ideally, the soil will be below 55 degrees at the time of planting. So you've got a little wiggle room in there, but try to get them in during the cool part of your spring and a little frost is okay. Uh, another companion question from Six Duchess Farm for Champion Campanula. Do you plant as an annual? Plant in the fall and remove in the summer after flowering? Um, yes, all of those things. Uh, you can plant them early spring before week 10 and treat them as an annual, or you can treat them more as a biennial by planting them in the fall. But once they're done flowering, they're done. You're not going to get another year of flowering. Okay, and the last question, Pug Patch Flower Farm, I'm in zone 7B. We often have very wet winters with a few days below freezing. I have both unheated low tunnels and open beds. Should I plant foxglove in the tunnels to prevent too much water? Um, I would, I mean, I would plant everything in a tunnel if given the choice. Um, this could be a case where you split the difference, plant some inside, some outside. That will also stagger your harvest window later on, which may be helpful to you. To you. Um, you know, other times you might want everything to bloom at once. You can harvest it and move it at the same time. But uh, I, yeah, given the choice, I would grow them in a tunnel. If you can improve your drainage so you're not worried about them standing in water, plant them outside, but no harm in doing both. All right, y'all, um, as I said, uh, many things are, are, are available in the store now for fall shipping. We're still working on getting our seed availability on some of the little things like poppies, like I think maybe we're out of some, some of the companions are sold out right now. We're doing our best to get that seed. In many cases, the seed is grown in Japan, it's grown in Italy, it's grown all over the world, and it takes, they literally have to harvest it first before we know what we're going to have. So uh, bear with us by July 3rd. We hope to have all of our fall offerings posted in the store. Many of them are there now. Um, as always, email us at info at farmerbailey.com. We're always here to help you figure out these questions. Um, I'm really proud of how a lot of you are doing. Um, you know, we, 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 watch, we watch you and talk about you and we're really, we, we share in your success when we see uh, a new grower that really nails it and gets it right. Um, but also, I'm all, you know, you should see all the failures. Every, most, most of the stuff, my sweet pea crop here is complete trash this year, and I'm the supposed uh, sweet pea king. So uh, take your failures with a grain of salt, learn from them, and move on. But, uh, but keep on trying, and let us know how we can help. All right. Thanks, everyone.